Hey, it's Marie Forleo, and you are watching Marie TV, the place to be to create a business and life you love. And this is Q&A Tuesday. And today's question comes from Miriam, and she writes, Hi, Marie. I really appreciate your website. It's been a great resource for improving myself. As a new business owner, a major thing I struggle with is shyness and speaking in front of groups of people. I realize that this is a huge hindrance and something I need to overcome. Do you have any advice or guidance on how I can improve my speaking skills and overcome shyness? Thank you and have a wonderful week, Miriam. So Miriam, let me tell you, you are not alone. Millions of people have this same fear. And I got to tell you, I have a special treat for you today. I have a special guest who has helped thousands of people overcome this same fear. And I know that's a big promise, but what you're going to learn today in this Marie TV episode will change your life. And I'm not just saying that because this guest happens to be my fiance. Josh Pice is an actor who's been in over 90 movies and TV shows. And he's also the founder of CommittedImpulse.com, high performance training for actors, artists, and entrepreneurs. Joshy, thank you so much for being Thanks here. Thanks for having me, baby. So um, you're one of the most brilliant people when it comes to this subject, and I've seen firsthand how you've helped thousands of people overcome this very issue. So what's the first step in supporting Miriam and everyone else who struggles with shyness or having some type of thing that, that's blocking them? So one thing that I hear in that is that Miriam wants to overcome shyness. Right. And maybe, maybe shyness is awesome. And maybe it's not something to overcome. And maybe trying to overcome it could be part of the uh, why she's having a struggle with it. Well, I think that's genius. And I know one of the things that you teach is a completely new way to quote unquote overcome for lack of a better word, anything that we're struggling with. So yeah. I know, Josh, that you have three really simple but really profound steps um, to dealing with shyness and to be able to really be your best no matter what you're feeling. And step number one for you is you're a vibrator. And that's profound. That is profound. That's profound that if you're a vibrator. So what does that mean exactly, you're a vibrator? Well, what that, can I tell the story about my daddy? Absolutely. Okay. So. My daddy was uh, a theoretical physicist uh, who worked with Einstein for 11 years. And I grew up in, the, in Manhattan, as you know. And in the summers, I would go to Brookhaven National Laboratory. And that's where my dad, he would go off to work and he would do his thing and I would play with kids and ride around on my bike. And sometimes I would ride up to his office and he had a floor to ceiling blackboard. Mm -hmm. And I would come in and he would be like deep in, you know, thought and he was kind of, you know, doing these enormous calculations and some, you know, I knew the alphabet, I knew the numbers, but there were like all these other images and symbols, symbols and things that he was, that he was drawing. And I would just be like, what does he do? And I just remember thinking like all the other kids, you know, in New York, like their dads were like truck drivers or school teachers. It was like things that were, you know, comprehensible to a six or seven year old. Right. And so I was like, the, tomorrow morning, I'm going to grill him. I'm going to find out what he really is doing. And so I was like sitting in the living room and he was like packing up, you know, his bag. And I was like, okay, now I'm going to do it. And he was like, so what, what do you do? Like, what, what is your job? <laughs> and, um, and he said, well, um, Joshua, and I was like, and he said, you, do you see, you see this table? It's like, you're not telling me what your job is. And it was like, yes. And he said, do you see your knee? It was like, and then he said, the smallest part of this table and the smallest part of your knee, when you break it down to the absolute smallest part, it's the same thing and it's atoms. Mm. And he said, and that's what I explore. He said, I explore like the building blocks of the universe. Yeah, exactly. I was just like, and whoa. Then, and then he like picked up his bag and walked out the screen door, and I was just like, whoa, dude. It's like, <laughs> I'm Adams, and I was like, I'm the same as the table, and and so why that story had such an impact on me is is later in life when I was starting acting on Broadway and movies and television. Yeah. There were times when I felt I would feel so much emotion and sensation and shyness. You know, and and I was like, and and I didn't know how to deal with it. And I tried to overcome it, and and then I remembered what my dad said that my body is a mass of atoms, mm. and it really something really shifted for me in that moment. And I instead of looking at these 
feelings and they really emotions really are vibrations in different parts of our body right and all of a sudden it was like how could how why should I look at this sensation and it's really no more than this like inside my chest why should I look at that as something bad right like, like if you felt shyness what yeah. you associated to be shyness as a certain vibration right I identified as shyness but the truth is it's just atoms that are vibrating mm. and that gave me a huge amount of freedom because I stopped associating it with something bad. It was just a vibration. Right. And that's why the first one is you're a vibrator. If we can just recognize that we vibrate and that's just part of life and it's not good and it's not bad. I think I just want to put a little pin in that thought because that's probably one of the most profound things that you've ever taught me is, you know, recognizing that as a human being and an alive human being that we're constantly vibrating yeah. and that we've only learned to label certain emotions and certain sensations as good and bad. And mm -hmm. if we actually remove those labels and just really look at the pure sensations we're experiencing in our body, the physical sensations, right. the vibrations, so right. to speak, that we have so much more compassion for ourselves and we get out of that realm of good and bad and we can actually just experience what it is we're really experiencing without all those labels that put us into a whole mental drama. Yeah. So I think, I think it's really, really profound. And if people really get that, you're right. There's a huge sense of freedom in it. It's yeah. really, really brilliant. And we're always going to vibrate. Right. As long as we're alive. Yeah. We might as well appreciate yeah. it. And when we're not alive and we're like floating around, we're gonna, like remember when I used to feel shy and vibrate? <laughs> we'll miss all that. Which is so So sweet. we might as well party with it now. Right, right. So, so step number two that you have is nickname your vibes. Yeah. Nickname your vibes. Nickname so them. Tell us about so, nicknaming. So, I mean, a lot of my students, you know, if they feel nervous, mm -hmm. they, they'll call it, for example, shushy, you know, or whatever they choose. And like shushy, if you go, if you're about to, you know, put yourself out there, go in front of a group of people yes. or ask for a raise or whatever, and you feel this and you go, I'm, I'm nervous. Like instant, or I'm shy. I'm shy. It's like instantly, well, and, and that's bad. We know that's bad. But if you just go like, I'm shushy, it's like, oh, okay. Like I'm shushy. And it's like a little, you know, Jewish leprechaun or something. <laughs> it's not, it's not anything bad. Right. You know, all of a sudden it's just like, yeah, I'm vibrating and I'm going to go ahead with with the task at hand. So right. maybe Miriam, you know, can come up with, you know, like maybe she can call it Shazam. I love Shazam, because imagine if Miriam was like stepping on stage and she was about, you know, to go out and speak in front of like a hundred people. Right. And instantly she gave herself a reframe, like rather than feeling shy, she's like, ooh, I feel Shazam. I'm, I'm Shazam. I'm Shazam. I'm Shazamming. Right now. Yeah, come on. It would kind of be energizing. Yeah. So, um, I love that. And I love the power of, I think reframes are really, really powerful in our lives. Yeah. And I love the fact that we can have fun with this and you can name it anything you want. Yeah. So um, the third step, and this is, again, this is something really profound. And I've, I've seen your work in action now almost over a decade, and it's, it's incredible. Step number three you have is ride it, don't hide it. Yeah. Ride it, don't hide ride it. Ride it, don't hide it. And, and by that, I mean, if you take this, these vibrations that are happening and you just recognize that it's creative fuel and that, it, and that it's something that's going to propel you into action. Yes. As opposed to, you know, trying to breathe it away and do all our, you know, techniques to get calm. It's like just, like, let that, it's just energy. And yes. let it just empower you to, to do whatever there, it's creative fuel. Yes. To, to go out there. To go out there. You know, a few things that you've taught me over the years, um, you know, when someone tries to hide mm -hmm. what they're feeling, you know, whether it's nervous or anxiety or anything that they've labeled as bad, right. whenever you try to suppress or hide it, you actually display that quality even more. Yeah, absolutely. Because you're just trying, it's like, oh, no, I'm calm. Yeah. <laughs> Right. And I've seen this in action again when someone just rides it, meaning they allow whatever the sensation that is to be there and speak authentically from that place. Mm -hmm. Ironically, the person appears very centered. And they are centered. Yes. It's like the idea that centered is something different than who you are in that moment is it's a centered is like if you're feeling this, like you're centered. If you're feeling this, you're centered. It's about telling the truth. Yeah. And, he, and the interesting thing is that when you speak from whatever is there, mm -hmm. people are compelled to listen to you. 
Yes. But if you're feeling this and you're trying to, you're putting your energy to try to be like calm, it's yes. like people disengage, like they can't listen because they're getting a mixed signal. Well, there's a sense of dishonesty, right? It's totally. like the person is feeling one thing and pretending or trying to show something else, yeah. which all of us have such acute BS meters, BS meters totally. these days that yeah. you can instantly feel like, I can't trust this person somehow. You know, I think you've made a really good point once that I heard you talk about where, you know, no one really wants to see, like who wants to see really a calm public speaker? Right. It would be boring. It, totally. Rather to see somebody reveal their soul, reveal their heart, even yes. if they are a little bit uncomfortable, if they just keep going, yes. it's like you just, you, you're just like, you root for them and you want to hear what they have to say because you know it's coming from their heart. Yes. And I think, um, I don't know if we said this before, but one of the other things that's been my saving grace that you gave to me was the idea and the concept and really the truth that if you allow yourself to feel something fully without resisting it, mm -hmm. that never lasts more than seven to 12 seconds. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you just feel like if Marion, before she goes out on stage, you know, to speak and she feels this, instead of trying to put it down, like just fully feel it. It's like you're on the roller coaster, you know, going up and it's like, you feel it and yes. then it's gonna shift and move to something else and to something else. And you just want to let the, this information be your guide track. Yes, it's really, really beautiful. Josh, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. I love you. I love you too. Um, and I really appreciate you sharing with every everyone. Um, I know you have so much more to give, but you've been kind enough to put it into little chunks for us to digest and be able to use, and that's beautiful. Thanks. Miriam, that was the A to your Q. I hope you enjoyed it and please use what we've shared and let us know how it goes. Now, Josh and I have a challenge for you. If you've ever struggled with any type of sensation or emotion that's held you back, we have a challenge for you to take on right here in the comments. Number one, and I'm gonna look at my notes. First, in the comments, tell us the sensation or emotion that you struggle most with that you'd like to quote unquote overcome. Number two, Describe that emotion or that sensation in terms of vibrating atoms. So is it like a tightening in your chest? Does it feel like champagne bubbles? Does it feel like a heaviness or an expansion? Really describe it without dramatizing what it means in your mind. We wanna hear just what the atoms do. How exactly do they vibrate? And number three, we want you to nickname your vibes and commit to riding it and not hiding it. I think this is such a cool challenge. As always, the best action happens after the episode at marieforleo.com. So go there and leave a comment now. Did you like this video? If so, subscribe to the channel and of course, share it with your friends. And if you want even more great resources to have a business and a life that you love, plus some personal insights from me that I only talk about in email, get your buns over to marieforleo.com and sign up for email updates. Stay on your game and keep going for your dreams because the world needs that special gift that only you have. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time on Marie TV.